Hey guys, welcome back to another movie review. <laughs> oh, sorry, that is so bad. Hey guys, welcome back to another movie review, and today we're gonna talk about Ant Man and the Wasp. So, like I said in my initial thought video, Ant Man and the Wasp is the funniest Marvel movie ever made. Yes, even funnier than the Guardians movie. And most of that is due to the fantastic performance of Michael Pena and Paul Rudd. These two are magic together. Paul Rudd with his easygoing personality and he's so sweet, so warm with his daughter, but when he's with his friend, when he's with uh, Hope and uh, Hank, he has this like typical Paul Rudd comedy, you know, it's like, oh I, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, you guys are so smart. He would say things that are so out of place that it's just so, so funny. And Michael Pena with his fast talking, it's just way too funny, man. And when the four of them, Paul Rudd, Michael Pena, T.I., and the, the Russian dude, I can't remember his name, when the four of them are together, oh my god, it, it is comedy gold. This movie is pretty much jokes after jokes after jokes, and they are really, really funny. I, I would say like 90% of the jokes are super funny. You see sometimes the jokes, they um, work at the benefit of the movie. It make the movie that much more lighthearted and much more enjoyable, especially after Infinity War. But some other time it is at the expense of more character, more dramas. You know, like moments that would help, you know, drive the, the, the plot forward, that would help develop a, uh, a character e even further. But it's kind of ruined well, with, with like just little jokes. It, it's funny. It's got a good laugh out of, of the audience. But I would prefer a little bit more character development, a bit more drama in those particular parts. One other thing that I really love about Ant-Man and the Wasp is that it did not ignore um, the, the event of Civil War, of how, you know, Scott Lang um, got the, the Ant-Man suit and was fighting uh, Iron Man in, uh, in Germany. It could have been so easy for them in Ant-Man 2 to ignore the fact that, oh, uh, Scott was in Germany fighting uh, the Avengers. There are real consequences. Uh, to, to these actions, and he, he was in house arrest, and people are not talking to him, and you know, relationships being ruined, just all that kind of stuff, is good stuff, really, really good stuff. And I thought the villain, uh, Ghost, she was really cool, she's definitely one of the better villains in the uh, MCU, and much like that of Killmonger and Loki, she is a victim, she's not doing these horrible things to destroy the world, none of that, it's, you know, she's... Is there something really wrong with her and she's just trying to fix it. And in doing that, she hurts people and she makes some really questionable decision. But it is understandable. Her motivation is understandable because she is, again, a victim and she's just trying to fix herself. So that aspect of uh, Ava or Ghost, I really, really enjoy. But we just don't have enough of her. The audience did not spend a lot of time with uh, Ava in order to really care about her the way that we care about Killmonger or Loki. And the moment where we learn about her character and why she's doing the what she does, it is just one big exposition uh, scene that, that felt really lazy. The character just, you know, like sit down and you tell everyone um, why she is the way she is. So for me, from a screenwriting standpoint, that was pretty disappointing. Maybe it's just the nature of her character that every time she's on screen, this has to be some CGI, some uh, special effect going on, um, which looks amazing. Um, but maybe because of that, they can't have her in the movie as much because that would cost a lot of money for those uh, a CG shot. And speaking of special effect, the special effect in this movie is pretty damn good. All the shrinking, all the you know giant man stuff, it looks awesome. And when it goes to the quantum realm, it looks amazing. Some of the best visual effects you're gonna see this year. Um, definitely remind you a little bit of uh, Doctor Strange, the way the the quantum realms looks. And the action there are also really really exciting. Just really small scale action. You'll just hand to hand combat, some chase scene here and there, but nothing like world ending like Infinity War, which is a really good change of pace. One thing though about the action that's when they do like hand-to-hand -hand combat with ghosts, because again, the nature of her character, there's a lot of, you know, swing and miss because, you know, she can face like a ghost, you know, like so Ant-Man and like the Wasp would like swing at her, they all miss, so it, it looks kind of silly at some parts. Um, you know, I prefer my hand-to-hand -hand combat to, to be like, you know, block, 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 punch, pun, and you know, like, kind of like, kind of like one of, the, like, the old Chinese movie, like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, or John Wick, you know, you know what I'm saying, uh, or, the, or The Ray. The action in this movie are really, really cool, don't get me wrong. They found some really cool ways to display those powers and what Ant-Man and the Wasp are capable of, not just shrinking or not just, you know, turning themselves big. The actions are really creative, um, 
But again, when it's come to hand-to-hand -hand combat with ghosts, there's just so many swing and miss for me to actually enjoy them. The movie is also a bit unfocused because Ava is not the only villain in the movie. She's not the only threat to, to Scott and Hank and Hope. There's also this dude named Sonny Butch, played by uh, Walton Goggins. Uh, and listen, I love this actor to death, right? He is an amazing actor. But I feel like if you cut his character out of the movie and just have ghosts be the only villain of the movie, the movie would have been better, would have been more focused, and also the FBI, uh, Randall Park, the the, the, the the actor who played Kim Jong-un in the, the, the interview, he played this FBI agent who's trying to keep uh, Scott Lang in check, and you know, I, I like his character a lot, he's funny, and you know, he's uh, his presence is you know very welcome, and I, I would love to see more of him in future MCU movies, but with him being in the movie, now Scott Lang has to fight Ghost, has to fight the FBI, has to fight uh, Sonny, it's just all over the place. And toward the third act, it's got a bit messy. And also in the third act, one character um, is able to do something. And, you know, it, it was so out of the blue. It was so random. And I was like, w since when can she do that? Like, that makes no sense to me. And the movie gives you this, like, half-assed explanation of how, you know, she was uh, able to do that amazing thing that she does. Um, but I did not buy that. I, like, the, the screenwriting of that part was so lazy. And I was like, you call that an explanation? Come on, man. All in all, I had a really good time with uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's not a perfect movie. There's a lot of stuff that needs explanation. And, you know, there's, like, again, too many villains. And the jokes there are really funny. Sometimes work, sometimes... Not really. It is another really funny, really enjoyable Marvel movie that you could watch with your family, with your friends. You know, it's just, you know, a really typical Marvel summer blockbuster movie. Um, and sometimes, that's all I need. I'm gonna give Ant-Man and the Wasp an 8 out of 10. Definitely stay for the mid credits. That shit was hot. Hey guys, you got a chance to see Ant Man and the Wasp. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And if you enjoyed my review, hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to see more reviews like this? And with that being said, I'll see you soon.